Welcome to Pokemon Flux, a new fan game that has probably got the best art style I've ever seen. Like it's absolutely beautiful to look at. The story is set in Altira, a new region that has also got a new Pokemon gimmick named Flux Energy. And with this Flux Energy, your Pokemon can perform special moves once per battle. It feels a little bit like Z moves, but also not really. I'll explain it more later in the video. Some of the people that are working on this game have also made Pokemon Uranium, so if this game is anything like Uranium, we're in for a treat. It has custom Fakemon that are honestly top of the line, and you can also choose between three protagonists. Sky, Terra, and Aster. But don't worry, if you choose one of them, the other two will become your rivals and companions throughout the game. Let's try to smash 4,000 likes for this amazing new fan game, and also let me know in the comments down below which Fakemon you thought was the coolest. Now let's get right to fluxing. As the game starts off, we jump right into a cutscene of a Pokemon battle, but it's not just any Pokemon battle, it's the Championship Finals. We immediately get to take a look at the champion, whose name is Alistair, and he's obviously the guy with the white and blue hair. The champion uses his ultimate flux move, and that ends the battle. As we hear the crowd admiring him, the screen turns black, and we get to pick our starting character. And if you guys expected me to pick Sky, you guessed right. He just has the best design out of all three of them, in my opinion, of course. Me and my two friends then step out of the stadium and talk about how awesome the battle was. And tomorrow, we're actually going to get our very first Pokemon ourselves so that we can become Pokemon trainers and eventually maybe challenge the champion too. But then we hear some cries of help. And upon further investigation, we see that two people are getting attacked by Flux Pokemon. There's nothing to worry about though, because the champion's here and he's ready to handle it. But first, he tells us more about these Alter Pokemon that we've just run into. They're basically charged with the Flux Energy, which gives them more HP, increased stats, and you have to defeat them before you can capture them. So they're sort of like mini-bosses. He then proceeds to give each one of us a starting Pokemon. You can't choose this, depending on which character you choose, you always get that Pokemon. I got Selkit, Terra got Lunapup, and Aster got Minion. The cool thing about these three Pokemon is that they're actually from Pokemon Uranium, and a couple of others you see in this game are also from there. These three fit perfectly for us though, which means we can take on the wild Pokemon together with the champion so he can learn us how to battle. The battle wasn't hard though, because he used a level 60 with a flux move against a level 20 wild Pokemon, and we didn't even get any experience from it. The champion is going to investigate this phenomenon further and also sends the people to safety. We then send them off and talk about how amazing this first day was and tomorrow we're even going to be able to pick a second starter. So we end off our day, get out of our house the next morning and I immediately realize that you can actually walk in more than four directions which is something most fan games and ROM hacks can't do. And I personally think it's a nice little addition and the Pokemon following me is always a treat. As I've said in the beginning of the video, this game is just so beautiful to look at. It's nothing like I've ever seen before. Enough simping for now, let's get into the lab together with Terra, because Aster is actually the kid of the professor, so he's already inside. We explain everything to the professor about the alter Pokemon from last night. He is obviously not too happy about it, but he's just happy that we're alright, and he doesn't seem to have a problem with giving us a second starter. It's X and Y all over again, baby. I get to choose first, and you have three Three choices like always, Moss the Leaf Moth Pokemon, Chiclet the Chick Pokemon, and Findol the Dolphin Pokemon. Since I already have a water type and I just really like Chiclet, I'm going to be going with the fire type starter. And then we of course have our very first rival battle against Terra. She might have picked the starter that's good against me, but we should be able to come out on top if we put our heads in the game. And they were just doubling up on my chicken, eventually even taking it out without much trouble. They were no match for Ariel's bubbles and echoing voices though, as our first battle ended in a win. We get our next objective, which is to head to Condor City, so that we can report to the Altira League HQ that we can be licensed as official Pokemon trainers. And we also get our Pokedex. He also explains about Flux Bracers, which we are going to need in order to use Flux moves, but we'll also get those in the city. So the squad heads to Route 1. 
Here I find another really charming feature, Pokemon running around in the overworld. It's so nice to see and it really makes this world feel even more alive than it already is. So I immediately grabbed a Kavmi, which is like this region's Bidoof, and of course a Humbor, which comes straight out of Angry Birds. With these two new additions, we try to proceed to the next town, but we get stopped by Aster because he also wants this first Pokemon battle. He leads off with an Outen and a Minion. Outen also comes from Pokemon Uranium, but it seems like this is a regional variant because this one is Fairy type and the other one isn't. After burning and bubbling him to a crisp, he tells me to come with him to the HQ. So we enter the impressive building and we see a guy with purple white hair talking to our beloved champion. Or should I say ex-champion because he just stepped down from the Pokemon League and won't be participating in the tournament anymore. There really isn't an explanation to why he's leaving but he does say that there are going to be stronger trainers out there and some of them might even be in this room. He explains to the purple haired guy that we have a lot of potential for Pokemon trainers as we've already defeated Alter Pokemon. Pokemon together with him, so while he's off duty, they should put their trust in us. He says his goodbyes, and we get introduced to Akia, and he's the director of the Altera Pokemon League. He praises us for defeating the Alter Pokemon earlier, and does a background check before we can get our trainer IDs. Of course there's nothing wrong with us, so we get them immediately, and he also explains something more about his family's business. The name is the Altair Corp and it's being run by his brother and sister, but he really isn't into managing stuff, he's more about Pokemon battling, which is why he proceeds to give me a Flux Bracer and enter a battle with me, so that we can learn how to use them. And he seems to have a Sluchu, which is... Kind of like a Pikachu mixed with a slug, I guess. And, uh, well, he uses a flux move first turn, summoning an electric terrain and killing my little bird dude. So I swap in Ariel and hit as many echoing voices as I can, but because of his electric type moves, this is not the best matchup, and I still proceed to go down. I bring in Biggie and finally take the slug down with some tackles. He then proceeds to show us flux kiosks, which are basically just TM machines, but for your flux moves. So with that brief explanation, out of the way, we can go to the Alba Academy, so after walking through this beautiful and lighted night city, we stumble upon the flying taxi service, which you can use to fly around the region, of course. Really great that you unlock it this early. On the next route, I captured a Pauchlet, a normal type possum Pokemon, and Hulit, the trash bird that looks super cute, but a seagull once stole my ice cream, and I'll never forget that. I also found a regional form of Nidoran in Ice Green round type and I personally can't wait to see what this turns into. We grab the old rod by a beautiful windmill from a fisherman and capture Bucket de Salmini because of here we have Bucket of Salmon. Then we reach Alba Town and we immediately try to enter a nearby forest but we see a guy talking to a security guard because nobody's actually getting into the forest as there are altar Pokemon making a ruckus. We of course also see this other guy trying to enter the forest, his name is Gale and he's the top student of the academy in town. He pushes me out of the way and heads to the academy because there's currently a tournament going on. And he wants to show his power to this guy and the principal so that he can enter the forest and save people from the altar Pokemon. So we follow him back to the campus and enter the tournament together with him. Luckily for us the tournament was full of weaklings and regular trainers and at the end we had to battle. Gale the Menace. So I use my Flux move Sharp Flame to attack both of their Pokemon and take down Majef. But as it turns out, the Tanupi was actually a Zora and a regional form of Zora at that, if I may say so myself, an even better looking one than the Hisuian. Without any problem, Ariel could finish it off with a disarming voice, and the last Pokemon on his team was the dark type Tanupi. So with a flame charge and disarming voice, we grab our first tournament win, and our starter also evolved into Burnichus. I have a feeling this line is only going to get better. So as a reward for winning the tournament, we get the HM for cut. We then go back to Gale's room and he explains everything to me. As it turns out, one of his friends, which is normally somebody that misses school a lot, has been missing for a couple of days, which is not his usual work. So he thinks he's gone into the forest by himself, and that these days
dangerous Pokemon might have done something to him, so we have to try and save him. He asks me to meet up at the school library at 8 p.m. at night. So that's what we do. He then shows me a hidden passageway, which also leads to the forest, but we need it cut in order to get in. That's why he wanted to win the tournament. Then we get to go through the forest together. He will always heal up your Pokemon after every battle, so this is great for shiny hunting or grinding. So I grabbed the regional form of Shroomish here, who's now not just a pure grass type, but grass and poison. I also grabbed the Tarut, the root Pokemon and pure grass type. I also grabbed Corsuave, the magician bird. Speaking about birds, our regional bird also evolves into Navibri, and Nidoran evolves into Nidorime, and it definitely has more moose vibes than whatever it was before. We then stumble upon his friend who is being attacked by the alter Pokemon Grimpos. As his Pokemon faints and he's about to get attacked, we manage to jump in by distracting the Pokemon and entering a battle with it ourselves. I had absolutely no problem defeating it though, as Fu's flame charges were enough to eventually kill the already dead possum. It reminds me of that possum from over the edge a bit too. So Leo here thanks us for saving him and we head out of the forest as fast as possible. But upon stepping out, the director sees us and wants to expel both Leo and Gale from the school because they undermined his authority. We explain to the director that we only did it to save Leo and that we even managed to defeat the altar Pokemon so this proves that we're actually strong enough to go through the forest and eventually the director is like, okay, I'll let you off the hook this time. Good job for taking out that Alter Pokemon. So we can move on through the forest. I found another Alter Zora and captured this one. Or at least I tried to capture it when it came out. I wasn't too happy. And I ran into Terra just in front of a cave again. This time she isn't letting me pass until I beat her up in a Pokemon battle. So let's whoop her ass. An amazing start to the battle for me. My starter goes for his Flux move, which is a fire type move. And both of her Pokemon are weak to it. So they both die in one turn. Then she sends out her starters, and Dilfender has been hitting the gym. I then use Furby's flux move and wing attack on Luna Pup, and Dilfender was also no problem with bullet seed and wing attack. She heals my Pokemon and lets me go through the cave. In here I grab a Gunafix, which is a fighting type and kind of looks like a regional form of Scraggy. I also grab the rock psychic type Comite and run into some mine workers that have some trouble. Apparently there were some rock slides and some of the roads have been blocked which means a lot of the portions of the cave are really pitch black dark. So the miner gives me some lanterns which I can hang up on these rocks. After lighting the entire cave up, I run into Spelotl, probably the cutest Pokemon I have ever seen because I love Axolotls, which I'm pretty sure this thing is based on. And after naming her Pam and adding her to the team, we reach the heart of the cave. And the champion is once again standing here, ready to lecture us on this big crystal in front of us. He talks about Flux Energy and how it powers the entire region but that we don't really know too much about it. The crystal that we're standing in front of is the biggest source of flux energy ever found and they decided to actually keep it here for research purposes. It's apparently also the key to the continued growth and prosperity of the Altera region. But he's done talking about rocks, he actually wants to test me in a Pokemon battle with Pokemon that he's just training on the side, so not his champion team. Let's get right into it, starting out with a Kamite and a Grizzlet against my Bucket and Foo. I use my flux move on them and do a decent amount of damage but none of them really go down and they even manage to take down my starter straight after. Bucket's water pulls then finishes off the Comite, he sends out Arapin and I bring in Pam. Pam immediately gets taken out but Bucket is able to water pulls the Grizzlet and force out his Sputia so I can bring in Furby. I go for the flux move speed bash and water pulls the Sputia, but sadly enough they then double up on Bucket, taking him down my nice fishy. Then I bring in Ariel, wing attack and draining kiss both of his Pokemon to take them down and win the battle against the champion. That's it, roll the credits, end of the game. Actually, let's not do that because this game is insanely good and we have to continue. He then tells me that we're going to be destined for greatness, we're going to be an amazing Pokemon trainer and proceeds to give me the rock smashing TM so we can get through the rest of the cave. But first, you're not gonna believe what I found in the overworld. I saw a slightly differently colored axolotl and ran into a beautiful white-ish shiny spellotl. Even Q 
cuter than the regular form and I immediately added it to the team and named this cutie Super Pam. We then run into a panicking miner who's like, there is a big monster straight ahead, please don't go there. But since we're unrivaled Pokemon trainers, we don't care about stuff like that and head straight into the danger. Upon walking over the bridges, the lights start flickering and we feel an ominous presence. And at one point, a giant black and purple squid jumps out of the water and attacks me. But upon further investigation, we can see that it's just a giant wishy-washy. However, this one is in fact another regional form. But by being able to put it to sleep with Ariel and proceeding to bash at it together with Rude, we managed to take down the swarm of tiny little fishes and eventually make it to the end of the cave. We enter Rooktown and just at the start of it, we run into our two rivals once again. They once again congratulate us on our alter Pokemon takedown and are a bit sad that they weren't part of it this time. Rooktown seems to be a desert town and it's also very deserted, like there's nobody here, it seems very quiet quiet and that just doesn't feel right. After walking to the town square we see all of the residents there arguing about something. As it turns out there is a power outage and this purple haired kid in the lift is the son of the guy that owns the power plant here. The same guy that actually owns Altair Corporation. So definitely someone you don't want on your bad side. He doesn't want any trouble with the townspeople or his father, so he's going back to the power plant to check what the problem is. We then get introduced to Nula, who runs the saloon here, and she invites us for a drink to come in. Personally, I absolutely love anything western, so I went in straight away and drank some Moo Moo milk. And I have to say, I would drink at this bar because it has a lot of charm. After checking out the rest of the town, me and the squad meet up again so that we can make a plan to get into the power plant and see what's going on ourselves. As we try to enter the normal way, we get stopped by some security guards saying that there is a problem and we can't enter. So instead, my friends here are going to make a distraction so I can slip through the fence and get caught by a policeman, which I just knock on the head with a swift punch so that I can freely explore the area. The first Pokemon I found here was a Rodillo, a super creative design, and I think the animal combined with the road just works very well together. Second was LED light, which was literally just a light bulb done right. And then we have knockoff Litleo from somewhere on a shady market. Gerbolta might actually be my favorite electric type Fakemon of all time, it's just so cute. But then, after all of these encounters, we do meet up with Xander from Altair Corp. He isn't going to let me come into the power plant unauthorized. He even says that this is a shame to his family and that we can't just meddle in his business just because we're a strong Pokemon trainer. So he challenges me to a battle right there and then. He has his very own Cor Suave, but also another form of Meowth. Like we don't have enough of those already. But that Meowth was gone as quickly as it entered the field. With my Flux move, I just destroyed it in one hit. I then went for Ariel's Flux move and almost took down Tanskur in one hit, but Foof was able to go for the flame charge to finish that thing off. Only his little tiny Spilotl remaining who is able to take down Fu, but doesn't stand a chance against a shiny one of his own species. Our friends also manage to break through the barricade of guards and we demand an explanation for all of this. So he lets us inside of the power plant and explains that Alter Pokemon have broken in here and have been disrupting everybody's work so the power plant can't run anymore. They even stole three keys which you need in order to get into the reactor. Which means it's been unaccessible for the entire time they've been in here. So we team up with Terra to try and find the first one. We enter a room filled with electricity beams. These change every few minutes so you just have to follow the right path but if you hit them your party will get shocked and lose some health. Then right at the end all you have to do is flip the switch and the alter Pokemon will appear. This time it's in Sulatex and he's ready to be a superhero, I guess. For some reason, he just couldn't kill my Furby. I kept on going for Bullet Seed like 10 times in a row, and Insulatex was no more. I entered the control room and found a Carmillari here. No idea what it is, but I want it on my team because it looks so good. This could honestly be a mythical Pokemon if you would put it in regular games. It really wasn't too hard, just two flame charges from my bird, and that was that. Only one more reactor key to go. 
And believe it or not, the last Pokemon was a Magnemite. So I bet you can already guess how that fight went. So we headed to the reactor, put the three keys in, and the lock opened. Aster decides to join us as we enter the deeper parts of the power plant. Just as everything seems alright and calm, we hear a sudden roar from on top of a machine. It's the final Alter Pokemon, and the most handsome one too, Megawatt. And this thing was hella strong, killing my foo in just one hit, so I have to bring in Ariel, use my special move, which did do quite a lot of damage, then proceed to hit it with a couple more draining kisses. We might have Terra's Pokemon on our side too, but they are pretty useless. Because my Ariel goes down and he has the opportunity to take this thing out, but he just does no damage. So I bring in Root instead, go for Pluck, and finish off Negawatt. Once he leaves this place, the lights come back on and everything seems to be working just fine. Relieved, we go back outside, but we get ambushed by this stupid kid's bodyguards. He's like, I can't let you all go without promising that you won't tell anything to anyone about what happened here because it could destroy the reputation of my father's company. This guy's gone absolutely insane, but I do understand that this could be a big blow in the popularity and financial department. He even threatens to take away my Pokemon if we don't comply to his rules. Luckily, helicopter arrives at that moment and his dad steps out to congratulate us for defeating the alter Pokemon that have been pestering his power plant. He even lashes out at his son and is like, how incompetent can you be? I ask you one thing to run this one branch and everything goes wrong and you try to cover it up and hide it from me? This is definitely not going to be a good day for this guy. He demands from the guards to untie us and that's what they do and then introduces himself as Antares, the CEO of the Altair Corporation. He gives me a heal module which I can use in between Poke Center visits to heal up my Pokemon. So that's an amazing reward if you ask me. So he takes away his son, hopefully to give him a good ass whooping. Me and the squad talk about how we don't like it that we have to keep quiet about this stuff. But to be completely honest, it doesn't really matter right now because we have a gym challenge to complete. So we go back to Rook Town and we run into the professor who gives us a new evolutionary item. A shiny stone. So I used it on Ariel and she finally turned into a real mermaid. And if I would compare this to Primarina, I would choose this thing 100% of the time. Such a cool design. We then go to the Rooktown Pokemon League Arena to enter the tournament. And the thing we have to do in this arena is defeat a certain amount of trainers to get their tokens so that we can eventually challenge the arena leader. Upon entering, we get our challenger emblem, which we need to fill up with four new emblems. So time to skip around the room and take on all these trainers. First I destroyed a random farmer, which leveled up Root and evolved it into Garbagull. It's like a flying type Garbodor and I love the umbrella and all the garbage and the goo. This is just a really smartly designed Pokemon. The second trainer I took on was actually Terra. And despite now having a hero loon, her team was still no match for my newly evolved Ariel and Fu. I fluxed move through everything and made sure she had to redo this tournament. Gale also attended this tournament, apparently. I haven't heard from him in a while. He had an even worse team than the farmer I just faced. So let's just say Ariel also destroyed him. Now probably the most interesting tournament battle against Aster. Throwing out an Eshuten and Grimpos. A pretty strong duo, but I think mine is just a teeny tiny bit better. I use Flame Charge and a Flux move to take out Eshuten on the first turn, and then Villacard, who could be a regional form of Crobat and looks like an absolute king of the night, decides to enter the battle. I once again take out a Possum, and then his starter comes out, Mossier. By far my least favorite of the three. I'm glad I went with the Firebird. Even though they doubled up on Fu and took him out, Ariel and Pam too bubbled their way through it. This nets me the final token that I needed and brings me up to the big arena above ground, where we get challenged by none other than Nula, the same person that runs that beautiful saloon. And she's ready to lasso me off my Mudsdale. Her two leading Pokemon are big boys, Digonkus, who's basically just a big radish, and Tarandible, 
a walking skeleton skull. I have my usual lead. We go for the double flux moves and take both of them out. Her next two Pokemon are Go Goat and a regional version of Arbok with a sheriff's hat and a lasso as a tail. Does it get any better than this? I don't think so. We do have to take it out with Siren Song, sadly enough, and Go Goat falls shortly after to flame charges. We get our Rook Victory Emblem, and the entire crowd in the stadium goes wild. We get our free TM and words of praise. We then end up leaving the stadium and regrouping with the squad. As it turns out, there's two other arenas in Corvo City and Cardinal City, but before we can go to these, our good friend Aquila from the Altair Corporation joins us and tells us to come back to the headquarters where we started our journey as trainers because his family has a very interesting proposal for us. We don't want to keep them waiting so we grab the nearest flight taxi and arrive there as quickly as possible. As we're waiting in the lobby, one of the employees comes to greet us and takes me to the lift that goes upstairs to their meeting room. We are still waiting on the CEO Yo, Antares to start the meeting, but for now, we get introduced to Adromeda, the sister of Aquia. She leads Altair Scorp's conversation and environmental protection efforts, and also manages the nature preserve, so I guess she's like the good girl in the family. She doesn't believe that we have potential as trainers and wants to see it for herself. So yeah, she challenges me to a battle here and now. And well, uh, there was a little bit of a problem, I accidentally boxed my two starters because I wanted to grind up other Pokemon and I didn't think I was going to run into a battle so I had a lot of bad and underleveled mons on my team so she managed to beat me but she did have some cool Pokemon like Nursa, Salmasalt, the evolution of our little Axolotl Salamancer and even though it's not cute anymore I still really like its design with like the staff and the magic stuff maybe trying to turn him into like a Pyro or a Necromancer we'll have to wait and See. She also had the final new Nidoran fusion, Nidoragina, and this is the female version. I would personally like to see the male one. Because even though this one looks pretty alright, I think Nidoking would be cooler. Anyway, we lost the battle and the CEO finally arrives. They are very pleased with the work we've delivered with defeating so many Altar Pokemon. So they have a special offer for us. They would like to sponsor the three of us. So they would give us money and resources and we would represent Altair Corp in return. But the weird thing is, they have to do it anonymously because otherwise they might be accused of favoritism. So they're like a secret benefactor to us now. We still don't really understand why they want to sponsor us though and then she explains that this region is so beautiful because of everything living in harmony and everything being connected by the flux energy but the region is actually in danger as you can see from the outer Pokemon. They even mentioned that Aster is actually an orphan because his parents got attacked by an Aster Pokemon when he was a baby so the professor adopted him. They're working on a super secret project called Excalibur. They are researching the Alter Pokemon and are trying to put a stop to them appearing forever so that the world can live in peace and we are going to be the key to doing that. They want to send us on a special mission but only if we agree to their terms. Of course we're not going to agree right away so we are going to have to sleep and think it over a bit so that we can decide it for ourselves and later on let them know what our answer is. These missions will require us to go throughout the entire region and it's all for the good of Altera. We even get money, special items and Pokemon. An offer that's hard to refuse, but it might be a while until we accept it because this is sadly enough for the demo for Pokemon Flux Ends. Because this is part one of three, they're going to release this game in three segments and this is the first one. And personally, I cannot wait for the other two. The story is really intriguing to me, the Fakimon are so well designed, the world feels so alive and vibrant and it just made me wish that Pokemon 
Pokemon would have continued in pixel art because look how beautiful it can be. But hey, if you want to give Pokemon Flux some love yourself, you can check it out in the description because I want this game to be finished as soon as possible. And of course, with all of that out of the way, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click your links in the description. And as always, people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggle, and I'll see you guys next time.